In this lecture, we talk about some of the strategic issues surrounding the scope of operations, that is, how broadly one operates in the marketplace and where along the value chain one chooses to compete. For example, you might want to be thinking about the, the uh, range of different activities that you, uh, you agree to focus upon, uh, that is, along the value chain. How broadly you address the market with products and services. Do you have one product, very specific, or do you offer a lot of features and functions and different kinds of products? Geographically, do you compete in just large cities? Do you compete in one country? Do you want to spread out broadly in a geographic marketplace, enter new countries and new markets, etc.? And also, the, um, the size of the footprint that you want to compete in, that is, how many products and services you want to have, how big a market, what industries, those sorts of things. What scope, in other words, you're putting forward in terms of people competing with you in that broader marketplace. Two ways to think about scope. One is horizontal scope, which is the range of products and services that you offer to the marketplace, how broadly, whether it's geographically, horizontally, in many states of the United States, or whether it's horizontal in terms of any, many products. If I'm doing rental cars, I also sell those cars after, in the aftermarket. I might offer people rides. I might have loyalty programs. I might have a whole lot of horizontal type of operations. I may rent trucks. I might rent vans, that sort of thing. Vertical scope is where in the value chain you compete. Are you only selling the cars if it's a rental company? Or are you only renting the cars? Or do you also run the operation? Do you have a distribution channel? Do you run a, run a website that manages some people's travel arrangements? Do you also go backwards on the chain and perhaps even do maintenance of your own vehicles? Do you outsource that or do it yourself? Maybe you even, um, it's an extreme example, but you might want to make certain types of cars or have certain cars that are certain models that are made specifically for your company with, uh, with various uh, features and functions and that sort of thing. So those are the ideas of vertical and horizontal. Horizontal scope, one of the things that it tends to do is it strengthens uh, the uh, economies of scale potentially. If you're in a horizontal, if you're horizontal broadly based, you tend to have uh, greater economies of scale, you're larger, you can consolidate back office operations, HR type functions, finance functions and the like over a broader product base. So you can amortize that more broadly and it can increase your efficiency and also your, your, uh, your effectiveness. Um, it can add differentiation in your products. If a customer doesn't like the particular product you have, you probably have an alternative product. Maybe even an alternative lower end brand that you sell through. Um, you have uh, you're in multiple markets, so typically you're not fighting to defend your niche as other people can't try to come in there, but you're keeping people, you're offering products in many different marketplaces. You have more bargaining power over suppliers, you're, and you have more flexibility in terms of addressing market needs with your portfolio of products and services. Um, typically, one operates to extend their marketing scope. For example, recently there was a merger announced, or it's actually a, an attempt at a merger between two of these cheap stores, Dollar, Tree, Dollar, um, Dollar General and um, Dollar Tree, I think it was called. I forget which one it was. But that would be increasing. Some of the stores are in some locations and not others. So by purchasing that other company, you're, you are essentially acquiring those assets. In that case, it's an acquisition. If you're acquiring assets from another company and extending your scope of operations geographically. You have more stores, in other words, in, in different locations. Typically, a merger is when two entities come together and they form a single entity, whereas an acquisition is when a certain uh, targeted function or, or asset or capability is brought into the firm, a bigger firm, usually a larger firm, that um, satisfies or opens or fills in some gap within their scope. And that's more like what an acquisition is, is typically about. Um, typically, what you're trying to do when you do horizontal mergers and acquisitions is buy a company that makes your operation more efficient. Usually, that involves some sort of rationalization of the assets. Certain duplications are sold off. Sometimes, individuals are laid off. Um, you tend to want to fill in gaps in, in, um, in your geographic coverage. Uh, you might want to go and fill in some products that you don't have. If you want to go, if you're a high-end product provider and you want 
to move some of those high-end products to more broad channels. Then you can open up some lower end, buy somebody that has low end brands, and then use some of your same capabilities to provide better products in those low end brands to uh, increase your efficiency and your economies of scale. When you're larger, you can bring in some new technologies. When you buy another company, they might have a different uh, warehousing system or operating system or back, uh, back office process or new types of technologies even in manufacturing or in design. Um, and typically, these kinds of acquisitions tend to converge industries into large, over time, into large num uh, a small number of very large players. However, there's a lot of challenges associated with, uh, with mergers and acquisitions. Um, sometimes they fail to produce the results because there's difficult challenges of integrating two different ways of thinking about business together. Remember, one of the things we've talked about is there's no one way to run a business. You kind of make it up as you go along. Some people are very good at it. There are some principles, but still there's different ways, and sometimes those are incompatible. And that can, can cause some cultural issues or some, some conflicts of scale. Sometimes that, that process, some of the key employees in the purchase in a company that is losing some of its positioning and authority or power and the relative uh, scale of things, some of those key employees might, might leave either because they're, they get frustrated or because someone sees an opportunity to hire them away from you. So you can tend to um, lose that, that process. And also, acquisitions are a, a skill that not everyone has. The integration process across businesses, I actually did this kind of work for a number of years. And many times, people who have never done it before are put in charge of acquisitions and they tend to make mistakes about how to do things. They think it's easier than it is. They hire the wrong people. Uh, they don't realize how you um, integrate different mindsets about business and different business operations and activities together. And that can be part of the problem with bringing organizations together. Many, many acquisitions fail. Um, you have to be really good at it. Companies that are good at it, though, it is an extremely effective growth strategy. Um, sometimes in some industries it's called a roll-up, when one company starts buying up all the similar companies and turning them into, act, turning them into companies like them, clones like them. They roll up independent players essentially into one national system. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about vertical integration. That's another type of, uh, of another area of scope change or scope activity, changing the scope of what the business does, the activities the business does in terms of implementing strategic options. We'll talk to you then.